teenager charged with murder and a shooting death at the area of Tampa Bay in the fatal bullet inspired by police. According to prosecutors, an 18 and 16 year old exchanged gunfire outside a high school football game just outside Philadelphia back in August. The Delaware County Medical Examiner saying Fanta was hit in the crossfire, accidentally killed by a police officer shot. While the teens did not fire the shot that killed the eight year old, prosecutors are charging them, saying their actions initiated the shooting, the legal maneuver known as transferred intent. The prosecutor is currently suggesting is that he's going to charge them with all the crimes that could be attributed directly to the police like first degree murder. The community here outraged that police officers are not being held accountable, protesting in the streets. At this point, both officers are still on the job. Demonstrators in other cities have also marched to honor the life of Fantability. The lawyer for the Billity family says they think justice is not being served. I think that uh, the family members, uh, along with me, think that it's a difficult uh, uh, stretch for the district attorney to be able to successfully prosecute these two uh, men for what they did uh, that uh, in the aftermath led up to the uh, the death of Fanta Billity. Uh, clearly, the family thinks that um, the police officers killed Fanta and um, that they are the ones that need to be held accountable. In a statement, Delaware County District Attorney Jack Stolsteimer said, today is an important step in my office's continuing effort to seek justice for Fanta. You have to draw a line between what they did and what the police did, understanding that a tragedy did occur here. All right, Zinclair joins us now in the studio. This is a very strange case. It's one of the reasons why we're doing this story. Do we know what's happened, if anything, to the officers? Yes, yeah, so the officers, ever since the shooting, have been placed on paid administrative leave. Their names still have not been released. But it's worth noting that the DA's preliminary finding did find that it was the shots of the officers fired when returning fire that ultimately hit four others in the crowd. That includes Fanta and her sister. So November 18th, we're going to hear from a grand jury. They're going to determine whether or not police use of force was justified. Tom. All right, Sinclair, thank you for that. Greetings and welcome to another powerful edition of the Community Defender Talk Show, one powerful hour of truth, uh, dispelling falsehood. I'm your host, Brother Daryl Muhammad. Rashad Ali Muhammad. And we, of course, are very, very glad that you have tuned in to uh, tonight's program. And, of course, we're going to be getting into uh, the work at hand. Uh, we know that we have a, a, a white teenager uh, shooting up the schools in, in Michigan. we got a lot going on. Uh, we also have uh, voter rights issues. we got uh, the, uh, the people who were falsely charged with the murder of Malcolm X have been exonerated. And we have uh, Rittenhouse uh, acquitted. we got... Uh, the murderers of Ahmaud Arbery um, finally were uh, convicted. That's right. And so we, we, there's a lot going on, but we want to deal first, right quick, with the topic at hand, and that is that faith without works is dead. Now, this, of course, is the third time in uh, over 22 years that I have not had on a suit and a bow tie. And on, at each one of those occasions, I have always, if I didn't have a suit and bow tie on, on, on this the third occasion in 22 years that I didn't have a suit and a bow tie on. But I always had an alpha shirt on if I didn't have the suit and bow tie on. So you're talking about only three occasions in 22 years, so please forgive me. The reason that I have the uh, Alpha Phi Alpha shirt on is because... It is our Founders Day weekend, and um, I wanted to mention that it, it is our Founders Day. 115 years ago, yesterday, Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity, uh, Alpha Phi Alpha Literary Society decided and voted to become Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity. Now, I wanted to mention something. We have seven founders uh, that are called jewels. We call them jewels out of respect. Uh, for what they did out of respect for that which they did produced. Um, and I wanted to mention that there was one gentleman, you know, we had Henry Arthur Callis, who was the uh, physician, and he, he was also a, a uh, medical school uh, professor. You know, we had uh, Eugene Kinkle Jones, George Biddle Kelly, Nathaniel Allison Murray, Vertner Woodson Tandy, 
we had seven men who came together who agreed that a fraternity or a brotherhood should be established. But there was one person that, is, that was called, when I was pledging, the precursor of Alpha Phi Alpha. His name was C.C. Poindexter. And C.C. Poindexter did not believe that the American Negro had the cultural foundation upon which to found a fraternity. Mm. In other words, he did not believe that the black man was good enough Come on. to have a collegiate brotherhood. He did not believe that we had enough culture. But Eugene Kinkle Jones and George Biddle Kelly and others who were working on the foundation did research into Ethiopia, did research into ancient Egypt, did research into the history of the black man and woman and found that not only did we have the requisite culture, did we have the requisite history, but that we should move further and become and declare ourselves a brotherhood forevermore. Now, uh, the thing I want you, I want to lay out to you, before, uh, you know, a, a lot of our children uh, were born, um, you know, the Omegas, the children, uh, the Kappas, the children, uh, every, all of the Divine Nine, uh, the other eight of the Divine Nine are children of Alpha Phi Alpha. But I want to say this. <laughs> Come on, brother. I want to say this. Uh, we love our children. Come on. <laughs> okay, we love our children, and we love what was started. And I want to say this about all of the black Greek letter organizations. Okay? Faith without works is dead. That's right. Uh, I want to say to my frat brothers, where we say, first of all, service of all, we shall transcend all. Service is the means of our rise as a brotherhood. If without service, mm. we're nothing. And the Bible says, without love, you're just a tinkling cymbal, a sounding brass, right? You, you count for nothing without love. So as, as a brotherhood in the black community, we got to have love for our people and we got to be dedicated to the service of the people. One of the things that I'm going to mention, uh, my dean of pledges, I'm going to mention his name, uh, Dexter Joseph. And Dexter Joseph said to us when we were pledging, he said we must always be relevant hmm. to the upward struggle of our people if we're going to be a fraternity. We got to always be relevant. So we, whether, whether it's within the organizational structure of our beautiful brotherhood or whether it's as individuals in our lives as alpha men, we got to be dedicated to the service of our people. And we should never apologize for being a brotherhood of black men. I see a lot of family men in alpha. A lot of men who uh, post pictures of their children, post pictures of their family. Uh, a, lot of the, a lot of our brothers literally have uh, their sons with them who are also alphas and they're posting these pictures. Look, the legacy goes on and on, but I want to mention mm. this to you. We got to work on it. Faith without works is dead. That's right. We got to continue to work and to strive and to follow the goodness of our traditions such that we can continue to be a relevant force in the life, not just in college life, because we, we already know what we are in college life, but in the life of every black man and woman on the earth, the goal should be to be relevant in that struggle. And I'm so grateful to God that I pledged at Theta Phi Chapter, University of New Orleans, and I'm also grateful that I, that I eventually went to Southern and graduated with, with the brothers at Beta Sigma. So I'm grateful for all of my experiences, but I want to I wanna mention this. To be alpha is a lifelong, to live up to those ideals Come on. is a lifelong striving. Come on, brother. And I didn't really understand what it was about totally, believe it or not, in, in, the, in the completion until I got involved 
in the nation of Islam. And then I really understood the power that brotherhood can have in the service of humanity. So I want to let my, my brothers know happy Founders Day weekend, happy Founders Day, and let us continue to exemplify the excellence that is Alpha Phi Alpha, the excellence that is the black man, the excellence that is the black community. Let's make sure we continue to do those things and may God Almighty bless all of the good works that we would do. Now, let's get on into our topic. Faith without works is dead. We live in a system of white supremacy. But that don't mean that we have to be white supremacists ourselves. We are, are dealing with an enemy who has an opinion. But that doesn't mean we have to take and believe his opinion about us or about anybody else. We have work to do to prepare a future for our people, a future that is not mired in self-destructive behavior and thoughts, a future that is not mired by us being unprotected through our disunity from the forces of evil that will come against us. We got to come together and every single inch that we make is going to take work. And faith without works is going to lead to more and more death. The murder rate is at an all-time high. Not an all-time high because it was a little higher in the 70s and it was a little higher in the 90s. But the point is... It's at, a, it's at a record high going far back. Baton Rouge has a record uh, murder rate. And that is because the work needs to be done. I understand you want to sing Amazing Grace, but there's no grace out here on these streets. Come on. You understand? You, you want to talk about what a friend we have in Jesus, but we, are, we have not been friends to each other in these streets. People are being found in cars, found laid out on, 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 uh, off of North Boulevard, found laid out, this laid out like every morning when we get up in Baton Rouge, there's some black person with bullet holes in them just laid out when people, when the sun come up. We just got to go outside and see who's dead out there that we can go in and recover the body. So we, we have work to do to, to come up to where we need to come up to. So that's the topic today, man. Faith without works is dead. Brother Rashad. That's right. Faith without works is dead. All praises be to Allah. Another beautiful show. My brother fired up. Got me fired up, man. I'm, I'm ro I was rolling with him all until he started talking about Southern University. He was all he was all to the good. <laughs> till he mentioned them Jaguars. But it's right. okay. It's okay. Grambling got to show him a little tough love last week. <laughs> all praises be to Allah. We, we pulled it through. We could lose all the games as long as we be Southern. It's all to the good. Yes, sir. So it's well, a beautiful and, and topic. We, yes, sir. Faith without works is dead. It's great. Hey, Southern had all the faith in the world. They had all the faith. Man, <laughs> they had all the faith in y'all, right. man. But, but we had to do the work, huh? Yeah, they, they couldn't come through <laughs> on the work part. They couldn't come through. So it's dead. All praise <laughs> due to Allah. G man, let's do it. <laughs> so we here today, family, and we welcome your calls. Uh, I'm so honored to be on the show, a community defender, where we strive each and every week to bring you that undeniable truth, invincible truth, speaking truth to power, faith without works is dead. Hey, you got to put it, you, you can believe it, but in order to achieve it, you got to put that work in, you got to put that work in, so we be out here on, in Lafayette on Opelousa Street, no, not Opelousa's. See, I be in Lake Charles too, so I'm getting it confused. We be we be everywhere working. So out here we be on Simcoe. Simcoe and Louisiana Avenue. I got to see a brother the other day. He pulled up on me. He said, uh, brother, I got my final call. He held it up like this. I got my final call, brother. I'll be watching you on the show. So a special shout out to my brother. That uh that that that's confirmation that we are tuning in and we are listening. To this invisible truth, all praises be to Allah. In the nation of Islam, today was our last day of our unity fast, where everyone in the nation strives hard to complete a three-day fast to go without food, just water and coffee or tea for three days. Now, you got to have some faith to, to even attempt it, right? Mm -hmm. But you got to put some work in there to get it through and see it through to the end. So faith without works is definitely dead. We can't. We want to fight against this virus, these different strands of this virus. 
We have to put the work in. We can, we, you can, you can, you, don't put the faith in the needle. Don't put the faith in the needle because as my, as my brother was showing us earlier, hey, it's not working. The stats are right here. That's why we got to get this final call newspaper. When you get this final call newspaper, catch us out there, Simcoe, Louisiana Avenue. You open it up to page nine. When you get to page nine, it tell you right here. It go up each and every week. Each and every week, the final call come out. It's more deaths related to this vaccine. So we need to strive hard, family, to put in. Have, we can have the faith that we can get, overcome this, but we have to put the work in behind it. If the work is not getting the shots, jab one, jab two, jab three, then you're going to be jab, jab four. Jab to infinity. Jab to infinity. That, on, ain't, that ain't it. The work is to get up, go outside your door, put them up, put them down. You don't have to spend all your money at the, at a mem getting a membership to you cuz a lot of us think, look, I can't make it to the gym. I don't have time. I don't have the money to get go here to the gym. You don't have to do that. All it take is some walking. That's all we have to do. Walk. Walk and eat right. Try to eat a little better. If you're eating five, six, seven times a day, that's your problem right there. Try to cut it down to two times, two meals a day. Then when you master that, go to one meal a day. Try to eat uh, in intervals in between a certain time period, between four and six, preferably. That's what you want to do. And see, that's why you got to get this. That's why you got to get this Final Call newspaper. Because when you open it up to page 28, you open it right up to page 28. That's our health and beauty page. The sisters love that, the health and beauty page. It's right here, page 28. It's entitled, How to Eat to Live. How to Eat to Live. Food can be life or death. So, we, we see this. That's faith, right. this is work. So, if you apply faith with work, you accomplish all this, the said above goals. Everything you set out, you can get it. But you have to, you can have that faith. See, a lot of us in my generation, we got a lot of faith. We got a lot of get up in us about all the things we want to do, all the things we want to accomplish, but we don't have the stick to it in this, the work. <laughs> we have to put the work in with the faith, and when you put that together, we could do whatever we want to do in this life. We could get out of it. You got to, you get out what you put in. That's right. So if you're just putting a whole bunch of faith in it and no work in it, you could, you won't have no results. But, you know, like grandma did Southern, you know, we had all the faith in the world <laughs> that we was going to smash them boys. <laughs> Went out there, applied it, the work. You could tell who been putting that work in all year. You know, they, they might have been a little hung over from Jackson State, you know. Shout out Coach Prime doing his thing over there. You know, I love to watch them brothers do what they do and how mm -hmm. they do it. They got a lot of faith and a lot but, of work. But I'm going to tell you, Coach Ooh. Prime, uh, brother Deion Sanders, is an example of how when you put that work in. That's right. And you got a goal, you got a vision to highlight black college uh, ball and to bring your skills uh, however long he's there, he's brought his skills and his talents as well as his children That's right. to the endeavor of uplifting the black institution uh, of, of Jackson State and literally, of and literally unified a whole city. That's right. The thing I, I, I want to say is that it's, it's bigger with Brother Deion Sanders, Coach Prime, it's bigger than just a swag title. That's right. It is about him mentoring men. He is helping to make husbands for some of you sisters in the future. He's helping to make fathers for some of the children in the future. Most definitely. So what he's doing now is gonna be is gonna impact people in the future, where you might not it might not be on television, but it's gonna be revolutionary. Now I'm I'm gonna try to play something. COVID-19 is vaccinated. I want to play something if I can. From uh, your uh, your vice president, and uh, oh, you got it. Okay, yeah. you think you can play it? Okay, go ahead and see if we can get it because it's a different file, and uh, the bottom line of it is is that I want you to hear Kamala Harris, uh, the Kamala, vice president, the vice president of the United States. Uh, of course, she's a, a member of the Divine Nine. She's a AKA. Hi. Uh, 
Howard University Alpha Chapter, and you know, all of that. Let me see. Because I, I can try to play it. We got it. Shout out Alpha Phi Alpha. Shout them brothers out, man. They some good brothers. For the most part. Okay. This Come is on. the vice president. Come on. Every person who is in the hospital right now, sick with COVID-19, is vaccinated. And even more, regrettably, virtually every person who has recently died mm. from COVID-19 was vaccinated. The loss, the tragedy of that loss, literally every I wonder if that did that. You think that audio came on there? I'm going to play it again. Virtually every person who is in the hospital I, I want them to sick hear the with audio. COVID-19 right now is vaccinated. I'm going to repeat that. Virtually, it's a fact. Virtually every person who is in the hospital right now, sick with COVID-19, is vaccinated. And even more, regrettably, virtually every person who has recently died from COVID-19 was vaccinated. The loss, the tragedy of that loss, literally every person who has died from COVID-19 that we have recently been seeing was vaccinated. Now, uh, I hope that, that, mm. that you all heard that audio. And keep in mind, this is a, uh, a post that likely was in the context of, uh, and We're likely was in the context of the selling the booster. I, I want to make that clear. The context, because I'm not going to come here and play games with you. It was more than likely in the context of her switching and pivoting to selling you on the idea of a booster. That no, you're not protected with the two shots, you probably need a third or fourth. But the fact that she laid out that most of the people dying, the lie that they've been telling for months is that most of the people who are clogging the hospitals are unvaccinated and this is a pandemic of the unvaccinated. No, this is a pandemic of the diabetic, overweight, and hypertensive. This is not a pandemic of the unvaccinated. This is a pandemic of those who don't eat right. This is a pandemic for those who don't exercise. That's right. And I, I want to say this up until recently, the U.S. military went for an entire 13 months and only recorded six COVID deaths. Come on. We're talking about 2 million people almost, only six COVID deaths total in the military, yet the Secretary of Defense said everybody's got to get the shot, even though up until that time, six, maybe seven people total had died of COVID-19 because they exercised. Come on. You're not allowed to be overweight in the military. And... So you exercise, you eat regularly, you, you're always moving. Therefore, what? The likelihood of death is low because of the exercise regimen that's required in the military. They didn't even need the vaccine. But now that they have been given the vaccine, the deaths are skyrocketing now relative to what they were, still lower than, than, than the average po the population. But now they're, they're, they may be up to 100 deaths after the vaccine because the vaccine does not help the immune system. Now, Africa has only a 4% vaccination rate. We're talking about the continent of Africa. Come on. Now, 
Uh, some have said two, but it's no more than a 4% vaccination rate of, of, we're talking about one shot. Only 4% of Africans have even gotten one shot. Hmm. That, the lowest vaccinated place has, the, has also the lowest COVID infections and the lowest COVID deaths. So what does that tell you? That in the highest vaccinated countries, they got the highest rate of infection. And in the lowest vaccinated countries, they have the lowest rate of infection. What does that tell you? And when you couple that with what Kamala Harris just said, and we ain't lying on the woman, then what does that tell you? That tells you that the Honorable Louis Farrakhan was absolutely correct over a year ago when he did a lecture called The Criterion where he urged our people not to take their medication. That's right. That's just what it is. So, so when, when we come on here, we don't come on this television screen to play games with the people of God. You are the people of God. You belong to him. So I'm not going to get on here and play games with, with, with the people of God. No, sir. I'm not trying to play games with your life. I would never utter something out of my mouth that I did not believe and know was best overall for all black people. I'm not going to say anything that's against the life and overall good health of black people. I'm not going to do it. I have lived my life in the struggle. Come on. I have lived my, I have raised my family as a no-vax family. Come on, man. For 25 years. So this is not something that just deals with this. I have not trusted these people. And I, I, I bear witness. Come on, bro. If you were to, you cannot find healthier people than my doggone children that, that re were raised in my household who did not get any vaccine. No vaccine. We, we've been rolling with religious exemption since 1996, man. Come on, so man. So this ain't new. This, you know, you, you, some of y'all are thinking, well, he just doesn't like the COVID vaccine. I don't like none of them because people are continuing to die. And here's the thing I want to I wanna put, put out to you. We're going to come back next time, not maybe not next time, but but between now and, 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 a, and, a, and maybe January with the data that shows you that vaccinated people have a higher mortality rate overall than unvaccinated people. You're more likely to die of something than I am if you got the shot. My sister sent me the data. I'm talking about my blood sister sent the data to my doggone phone and she was amazed. Mm. You understand me? The Honorable Louis Farrakhan said that this was a death plan. Now, the thing we got to do in the black community is teach unity and love for one another. Some of y'all don't want to teach black self-love because you think that somebody white is going to get offended if you say black folk should love black folks. But damn it, if you open up your door in the hood and there's a dead body there shot eight, nine times, Somebody got to teach black love. If there's domestic disputes where the black women and the black men can't get along, somebody has got to teach the very thing that we need, which is knowledge of self and the love of self. And don't worry about who gets offended by it. That's, right. That's why the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, Malcolm X, the Honorable Louis Farrakhan, Muhammad Ali, Come on. all of the great ones, you know, Abdul Sharif Muhammad in Atlanta, you understand? Abdul oh, Rahman right. in Atlanta. He's on the rock. Man. Abdul Bia. All of the great ones taught black self love. And that's what 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 we need. And we're not dying because we don't love white folks. You understand? We're dying because we don't love black folks. Do you understand what I'm saying? We are having problems because of a lack of love for one another. And that's going to take work. And as I preach all the time, and I live this, this ain't something that is, is I'm, I'm talking about on TV. When people meet me, you know what they say? What well, they you, say? you the same way you are on TV. Come on. Yeah, I'm the same brother in person. I'm the <laughs> same brother. It, I'm, I'm the same brother. And I got that because of the example of the Honorable Louis Farrakhan, because he's the same in public as he is in private. Because I've been in private meetings with him. <laughs> Had dinner with him. And guess Come what? On, man, he, man. he on the same thing in private that he is in public. The point is, we, that's something the knowledge of self and love for self 
absolutely has to be every institution that is black, every institution, whether it's the church, whether it's, whether it's, it's our Greek letter organizations, whether it's the NAACP, the Urban League, everybody has got to say as black people, it's not about hating somebody else, but as black people, we got to love one another, period. We got to embrace one another. I don't care if you're a blood or you're a crip, you're a gangster disciple, vice lord. I don't care what it is, rolling 30 crip, whatever the hell you're talking about. We are black folks in a system of white supremacy that is trying to destroy all of us. And we got we ain't got no choice but to come together. That's right. I, look, some of y'all say, well, you chose to bring Rashad Ali on, on the show. Okay, you might you can say that. But God damn it, I didn't have a choice but to bring the young people. <laughs> Who can come on here and bring that same fire? Come on. I'm gonna be dead one day. Come on, we brother. ain't got no choice but to bring our young people That's up for right, upgrade. We it's no choice. That's he right. gotta be on here. That's right. You understand what I'm saying? You can't yeah. no, it's no what else yeah. we gonna do? So what I'm saying is love is what it's about. That's right. And as the honorable the minister Louis Farcon said, he said that God has decided to love us into himself. Mm. I'm going to let you marinate on that for, for a minute. Brother Rashad, I'm, I'm trying to cool down. Uh, go ahead. Uh, <laughs> I better fire up, man. That's what time it is, man. That's what time it is today. We need some brothers to be passionate and fired up today. And do the work now. And do the work. The work. The work. My brother got a lot of faith, but he got a lot of work to back that faith up. And when he get tired, then I come with some more work <laughs> and some more faith to back it all up. He, my brother mission, brother Abdul Rockman on the rock. One thing Brother Abdul Rahman used to say is, nothing happens out of osmosis. <laughs> That's right. Nothing just going to happen. Nothing. You have to make it happen. The mind is the most powerful thing in the universe. So when we having these thoughts about what we want to do, we can absolutely achieve these thoughts by putting the work in. Come on, man. But we have to put the work in. We can't just say our prayer in the morning. Ask God to, to do what we need him to do for us. And we don't do what we need to do for him, brother Darren. Come on, man. Come on. We got to we gotta really show by our actions that we believe what we asking God for. At the beginning of the week, I'm a, I'm a self-employed brother. I do for myself. Because like the most honorable Elijah Muhammad said, do for self or suffer the consequences. Right now, a lot of us are suffering the consequences because we want to work for the enemy. Now he's trying to force you to get a vaccine which will kill you. So, in saying that, when we wake up at the beginning of the week, brother, and we going out, I can have all the faith in the world that I'm going to bring the bread home, feed my family. But you know what they say in the Bible? If you don't work, you don't eat. Hmm. So all that faith I have, that I'm going to bring it home, bring the bread home. If I don't work for it, I ain't going to get it. Come on, bro. So, so I, I can have all the faith, but I got to go out and work. And, and, and in, the, in the Bible, it also says your bread is with the people. That's where you're going to find your bread. The most, the most um, the armor minister Louis Farrakhan said, that's where we're going to find our bread, with the people. So if, if I got to go, if I got to work to get that bread, that means I got to be working with my people and for my people. We got a caller. All right, caller. Go ahead, caller. You're on the air with the Community Defender. We got to answer the phone, bro. Put that work in. Go, go ahead, caller. You're on the air with the Community Defender. Yeah, I'm enjoying the program. And uh, I just wanted to ask a question uh, about uh, something that's been on my mind uh, the last uh, week. Look, and uh, uh, okay, before you get in there, let me ask you a quick question. Were you able to hear the audio of the vice president? Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. okay, okay, that's all I want to know. Go ahead, bro. go ahead, brother. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, okay, it's, this is what's going on in, in uh, Lafayette, okay? They are taking the uh, jail that's downtown Lafayette and they're moving it to the north side, uh, presumably uh, amongst the, the residential areas and uh, schools where we have the, uh, black kids. And I'm, like, upset about that because I'm like, well, they're always moving uh, these, these uh, jailhouses in our 
communities instead of like, but they never try to, to move it in on the south side in the affluent communities. And I'm like, uh, this this is something that's that, that's this wrong and should be uh, addressed. And uh, they've done that before, and I'm starting to see a trend with 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 them, with uh these, these city council and and and, and uh, whatnot. And I just wanted to to, uh, to to get your 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 viewpoint on on this, and and what do you think about it? Well, this is this is what I, I would I would say about it, good brother, and that is thank you for calling. Man. Thank thank you for calling. But I would say say this: uh, not only uh, do they want to move uh, undesirable institutions like prison in in our, in 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 summer times in in those areas, because they they want to do the same thing in Baton Rouge. They want to move the prison uh, to the northern part of the parish, where that is populated by our people and. And probably and it, with, with a whole bunch of waste dumps and so on and so forth, uh, but they also put uh, a lot of uh, carcinogenic businesses uh, in the black community as well, and that is why the key to everything is the teaching of black love, the knowledge of self, along with love, which produces the love of self. And then that love of self produces the unity that we need, which gives us the power to overcome. But as long as you sit there as a disunified people, we got the callers. You, as long as you sit there as a people who are not unified, we got the callers. They can pick us off one by one, but they can't pick us pick us all off if we 50 million strong Let's or, go. or whatever it might be in 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 our particular m municipality. That's if right. we're unified. We're significant, and it's not anything that where we will be defeated in what we want if we if we come together. And the number one thing is black love, which produces black unity. And every institution, every Baptist church, every Methodist church, must teach black self love. Now uh, I know we got another caller. Go ahead, call you on the air with the community. Oh man, show the callers love, man. Yes, sir. Yes, good, uh, good evening, Brother Dallas, and good evening, Brother Ali Muhammad. Uh, you know, uh, I had the uh, great opportunity of uh, speaking with you on Thursday, uh, getting that final call. There you go, my brother. There you go. Yeah. How you doing, brother? Yeah. Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm, doing, I'm doing good, you know, and uh, uh, I didn't have a whole lot of, uh, time to conversate with you because I didn't want to hold up the traffic at the time. Yes, sir. But uh, I did let you know. You understand me, and you asked me to uh, call in. That's right. And I want to let I want to let you know. I appreciate the final call, the second final call newspaper that I got because I did get one before. Thank you, you know? brother. Yes, sir. And uh, uh, I appreciate you guys being out there to put the word out of the final call. <laughs> and what I'm calling for right now is we are taught verses in the Bible, not the Bible. Come on. You know, uh, 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 my brain function from the uh, uh, concept of the Bible, you know, I do come up with uh, like uh, Minister Farrakhan, yes, you know, uh, w with the Quran, you know. Yes, I uh, I do have a Quran that I read, just like I have other books that I read. I can't just put one book in my archive. I got to get multiple choice of books, you mm -hmm. know. And, and uh, uh, I appreciate, you know, uh, what you guys are saying. You know, uh, I don't care if you're not waking up nobody else, but you didn't do a brick and hit me in the head and. Woke me up. You didn't know that. Woke me up. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yes, and, sir. And that's and, and that's why I'm that's why I'm at. You know, uh, 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 I, I, I'm like this here. You know, I feel that Minister Farrakhan he is the leader of the truth. Come you on. know, actions speak louder than words. You know, and I don't see you out there, bro. Yes, you know, uh, pushing the final call newspaper, you know, and uh, I, I, I have I started reading it. I haven't re sat down and read everything in it, but some of the uh, uh, 
what uh, you could say headlines. I appreciate reading them because I understand when I read the headlines. Well, let me dig a little bit deeper. Come on. It's just like the word, the word in the Bible in the Quran. You understand know I me? Mean? When you start reading any one of them, you dig a little bit deeper than a, a certain paragraph. You go above the paragraph or you go below the paragraph, and it's all going to work out fine. But Darrell, hey, look here, man. I've been watching you for the last 20 uh, plus years. You know, I've always called you Come and on. told you, hey, you're throwing bricks in the graveyard. Keep throwing them because somebody going to say, oh, hey, I appreciate <laughs> you guys. And Thank you, man. <laughs> we, 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 we're going to uh, uh, keep listening. Yes, sir. All right. Thank you, guys. Thank, thank you, you now. brother. Thank you. And the caller who uh, tried to, to get in, go ahead and, and see if see if we, we can get you back in. But I, I we, we definitely appreciate uh that's All my brother. That's right. That's, you, that's, that's him. You, that's him. That's him. <laughs> that's right. Faith without work is, is dead, dead, brother. There you go. There you go. There you go. There you go. There Cause, you cause, go. Because mm -hmm. that work definitely has to be uh, uh, put in. Uh, and, and the Honorable Louis Farrakhan spoke on Saturday uh, to the Nubian Circle, a group called the Nubian Circle. But let, let's go ahead and take this call right quick. Go ahead and call you on there with the Community Defender. Yes, yeah, a very good program, my brother. Very good program. Uh, you were talking, I mean, uh, live to eat and stuff like that. Uh, eat to live, I mean, that is an outstanding topic. I wanted to say that the um, that Craig Prosper, uh, who is one of the councilmen out in St. Martinville, Louisiana, who looked like a little fat porcupine, uh, he was arrested for domestic violence uh, at the New, in New Orleans at the at the, uh, the football game this past weekend. That's the same prophet, Craig Proper. That's the same man that continues to give our beautiful uh, sister, uh, Mayor Melinda Mitchell, out in St. Martinville all kinds of hell when it comes down to her trying to get things done in St. Martinville and, uh, you know, uh, even having uh, her husband arrested because he's trying to protect her and all this other kind of stuff. So, the, the, the pokey piggy pine of the year would be Craig Prosper out of St. Martinville, Louisiana, who got arrested this past weekend for domestic violence. And if he could do that to his wife, imagine what he done, what he has done to mm. Mayor Melinda Mitchell out of St. Martinville, Louisiana. And I wish Brother Jay could pull up his picture. His picture is, uh, is on the police report. Uh, Jay, see if you could pull it up, please. <laughs> Straight up. Well, we we did we're dealing with with some with some wicked wicked enemies, and of course that dispute in St. Martinville, I have been hearing about that for I don't know for some years now that that mayor was uh, catching uh, some some hell from uh, from uh, mem members of of the of the council. White racist. Yeah, uh, as as the brother director said, white racist uh, on the city council, and the 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 thing is, is that on at every turn, uh, we are going to face opposition. We're going to face a fight, as the Honorable Louis Farrakhan had said, and one of his ministers, uh, Minister Ava Muhammad, had said, is that we're at war, whether we know it or not, whether That's we right. want to be it not or not, we are at war. And when you look at the AIDS that was dumped on us in Africa and in, in America, and you look at the crack cocaine and now the heroin that was brought from Afghanistan, they are dropping biological and chemical weapons on us. And when you look at the school system and the inadequacy uh, of what they call the education system, which is really a warehousing system for our children, uh, we must realize that we are absolutely at war and it's going to involve all of us working together uh, to win our sovereignty, to win back our minds, to win back our dignity. And, we, and that it's going to take love because a lot of times the, the craziest opposition that you have is sometimes your own people. Uh, there, were, there were times when black universities, black colleges were afraid to have 
Malcolm X to speak on the campus. Hmm. But the white colleges, with it. Uh, he spoke at Harvard, with it. Princeton, Yale, before some of these black colleges. And it wasn't until white Ivy League people had Malcolm X speaking there that some of the black colleges allowed him uh, to speak there because they were afraid, believing he was a bit too radical. And it's the same with uh, the Honorable Louis Farrakhan. He, had, he, he a lot of times can speak at, at Michigan. He can speak at the uh, University of California. Do uh, but, heck, sometimes, you know, he, he tried to speak at Graham. <laughs> I want to mention that. He tried to speak at Graham. There you go. There but, you go. But, but the SGA president, according to what the Alvin Lewis Farrakhan said, met with some ADL there you people. Go. There you or go. some, uh, there what, what, they, what they call those people? Um, the, uh, nah, don't you worry about it. I'm don't trying worry to think, about, think, think of the people. They have a convention every, every year. Uh, but no, no, uh, it was it's uh, the American Israeli Public Affairs Committee, and every black person that that is an SGA president or an, or a student government association president or a student body president, whatever you want to call it, is normally invited to their convention at DC because they the APEC reaches out to black leadership so that black leadership can be on their side. They watch you when you're in college. Come on. And they try to befriend you. Mm. Uh, matter of fact, my son was uh, the uh, the student body president at, at Xavier University some years ago before he got his dental science degree. And the thing was, I told him, I said, well, you know, the APEC is going to be called. And he's like, what you talking about, man? He, you, you know, because he thinks I'm kind of far out sometimes. I said, yeah, they're going to be calling you. They're going to invite you to their convention. He called me back three days later. Who did you say it was? I said, the American Israeli Public Affairs Committee. He said, yeah, they, 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 they flying me to D.C. I said, yeah, they're trying to befriend you because they see you as a future leader. And as a future leader, they want you in their camp rather than in the camp of your own people. Mm -hmm. I, I, I broke down the strategy to him and told him in advance what was going to happen, and that's exactly what happened. But, it, but in the case of this brother at Gremlin a few oh, years ago, man. Uh, he took a he flight knows. out to D.C., came back and killed the trip. The minister say he killed my trip once he got back to Grambling. So uh, that's some of what we face. <laughs> now, I love, look, uh, all you Gramlinites, I love you. I'm just telling you what happened. Now, he, now the Uncle yeah, Farrakhan uh, <laughs> spoke in 1980 at Grambling. Okay. Uh, all in right. 1980. Praise but it's be been 41 God. years he hadn't been back. But, the, the, but Southern <laughs> University in that same span of time has had the Honorable Louis Farrakhan uh, four different times, uh, the leader of the real free world, the Honorable Louis Farrakhan. I just wanted to lay that out there. We still uh, whooped him. <laughs> we still whooped him. Yeah. Go ahead, call your name with the community defender. Good afternoon, gentlemen. How Good you afternoon. doing? Good evening, sir. Great show, great show. Uh, this is my first time tuning in to you all. I do a little Facebook show myself. Uh, I'm calling from San Landry Parish area, and I love what y'all doing. Awesome. I need more of it. Uh, I'm a businessman, and I, I definitely I follow a lot of the Farrakhan messages as well. And I'm about to be I'm about to come and visit you all in life. Yet I want to be a senator for District 24. Um, we need we need true black representation. Uh, I'm pushing a new a new thing called the Demandocrats. Uh, we need to quit beating the beggarcrats. Uh, the blacks are the black population That's makes right. the determination in every major uh, democratic race throughout the state of Louisiana, and we get nothing out of the deal. We are still uh, doing sharecropping politics, <laughs> and uh, so when the master wins, the master wins the election, he give us a bone every night. And then they used to give us a bone, now they give us the crumb. Uh, we should be demanding 30 percent of everything that this office has to offer. We are approximately 32 percent of the, the the Louisiana population, so we should be demanding 30 percent of the population. I'm a businessman in the San Landry Parish area. I, we are the largest property owner in San Landry Parish. I sit on no boards. I sit on none of these things. I will not sit among a bunch of men with shackles. Uh, I, I do not. I refuse to wear shackles. I've made my living without shackles, so I don't need to go and make the living. Then go put on the shackles. On. Uh, we are right now fighting the public defender board in throughout Saint Louis Parish. 
Young black men are going to prison for nothing. I was in and out of the jail for 20 years, fight for the freedom of our young people. Uh, we don't have elected officials with guts. We have elected officials that look good, sound good, and do nothing. We have a bunch of do-nothings. Uh, I, like we, I have I like um, always throughout my life, I fought for the freedom of my people. Uh, but our black community now, they tend to run from you if you use the word black. Uh, they, uh, they seem to think as though uh, being black is a curse now. Um, we, uh, we have to do better, and you all are doing a great job, and I, 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 pray, I pray that you'll continue. Our young brothers need a vision. Our young black need jobs. They need opportunities. I'm in the construction industry, but I can only hire so many people, and so many people can you can put them cutting grass. They need training. They need technology. We send in the young black men to prison well, with drug addiction, with mental problems. Caller. You see, no blacks fighting for anything. Caller. Nothing. You Caller. See, they're not there fighting. We got black judges who sit like a bump on the log. Uh -huh. We send those children to prison without proper representation. We see it every day. We cannot see, we don't see no revised statutes in, in the criminal code where black judges have initiated changes in the local rules and regulations. Now, I bring about a different type of leadership. I bring about, we, why should we be begging Call for rightfully out? We Call have her. to demand our fair share throughout the state of Louisiana. Caller, uh, you, you bring up an excellent point where you, when you said you can only hire so many, the real point is it's going to take us all working together. You can't do it by yourself. You're going to need the support of others. The thing uh, I would also say is that uh, black judges uh, tend, and this is just statistically accurate, tend to sentence black people to less time than white judges. But both black and white judges sentence black people to more time than they sentence white people to on a statistical basis. So the black judge may give somebody 10 years, the white judge may give somebody 25, but both of them are going to give the white boy probation. Did y'all did y'all catch that? Mm. So both of them are inclined. If you go look at the statistics, of being easier on the white defendant, both of them is just that the black the, the black judge will sentence the black person to less time than the white judge, but both of them, statistically, I'm not talking about individual judges, but both of them are statistically leaning in favor of the white defendant. And that's just what it's been. I agree with you on that. A lot of these people will get a six-figure salary they're comfortable, and they cannot see or think outside of their own comfort zone. Some people worry about their, their position in the system rather than the condition of their people who are oppressed by the system. And that's been a problem. That's why it goes back to what? Work. And brother, if you want to uh, do what you do, run for office or whatever, you're going to have to put some work in, and you're going to have to exemplify the courage necessary to do that divine work and and understand it's a divine work we got three minutes left brother rashad brother now i'm a minister louis farrakhan said that justice is a prerequisite of life so we haven't been getting justice at all since we've been in america hmm. so we haven't been living so if you want to, if we, in order to get justice, like my brother was saying, we all have to come together and we got to put in a lot of, lot of, lot of work. Like the Honorable Mr. Louis Farrakhan said, how long are we going to beg the white man, the enemy, to do for us what we can do for ourselves? So if we want to learn how to do that, do for self, stop talking about it, praying about it, but actually be about it, come to 2600 Plank Road. In Baton, Rouge. Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Ten o'clock on it's Sunday. It's short. It's a short drive. Ten, Ten o'clock on we gonna, Sunday. We're gonna give you the game. We're gonna give it to you. Put bring all the sh get them all together in one spot. Come together and let's make it happen. Let us unite. Let us unite. Absolutely, man.
And I, I look again. I'm I'm very uh, pleased uh, that Allah has blessed us to have this voice for over 20 years. That's right. I, I thank Allah, Allah Akbar. for uh, the Honorable Louis Farrakhan. I thank Allah Messenger. for the Honorable, most, most Honorable Elijah Muhammad. I thank Allah for uh, Sister Khadija uh, uh, Asada Rashad, who uh, you know has has laid this thing out, has been putting in the work uh, for years. I thank Allah for. Uh, our brother director, brother Leroy, and Thank you, brother because Leroy. because this is a labor of love, and without love, none of this would have would have would have uh, kept going for over twenty years. You know it had to be love. Shout out the callers, man. That's right, and of course we definitely uh, thank everybody who calls. Love you, brother, and those who uh, look and listen, whether you agree or disagree. It's uh, all good. It's a heightened level of discussion. So how much time we got left? Are we good? 30 seconds. So I want to thank y'all again. Uh, happy Founders Day to Alpha Phi Alpha. And uh, go we're, gonna, we're going to have a 